Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Alright, in my last video with my Z28, my 1973 Z28, I had replaced the front brakes and all the brake lines. So the braking system on this car is completely brand new. In a previous, previous video, I converted the rear drums to discs and I redid the whole front uh, brakes, brake lines, everything. New master cylinder, new booster, it looks fantastic. New proportioning valve, all new lines. Now it looks good, but I did that all for safety because of course the whole system was from 1973, never been replaced. And so you got to replace that just for your own safety if you're going to be driving your car at all, which this summer I intend to drive this car a lot. And if you remember in that video, I had a problem with the master cylinder that came with my kit. It had scratches on the bore, so I had to get a new master cylinder that looks almost exactly the same which I did, put it all together, and then I took it out for a test drive. The test drive did not go well for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of the reasons I already knew I had, and so I kind of should have expected it. Another reason was a new problem that I somehow created. Uh, let me explain. First of all, when I got this replacement master cylinder for the one that was in the kit, I got it from um, Amazon and it looked exactly the same, except once I got it, I found out that the bore inside the master cylinder is 1.25, one and a quarter inch. That's a very big bore. Normally on a front disc brake car like this, it's a 1.12, like one and an eighth inch. So this is a larger bore. Uh, so what does that mean? So with a manual brake car without a booster, you usually have a one inch bore because you have to have a smaller bore to create more pressure uh, for to operate the disc brakes when you don't have something that's helping you like a vacuum booster. But with a vacuum booster car like this, you can go up to a 1.125 uh, inch bore master cylinder because that gives you a shorter brake travel and a better feel. And it's okay because you have a booster. In my case, I went to a 1.25 master cylinder. Now you might think, okay, I still have a booster, but I don't really. And so I've got a extra big problem now. The brakes in this car have never been good for years. Every time I come to a stop, I feel that I don't have enough pressure that I can't lock up the brakes. And it's just gotten worse with the larger bore in the master cylinder. The reason why is because this booster is not boosting because this engine's not producing enough vacuum. I'm gonna put a clip in right here to show you what I mean. Okay, this is not good. There's only about seven or eight inches of vacuum in this monopole. Now you can see from that clip that the engine's only producing maybe nine inches of vacuum and it should have at least 14 inches of vacuum to operate a vacuum booster system. So that means that my vacuum booster is not really working and getting this master cylinder with a larger bore just made the problem worse. So now the car is not just a little unsafe to drive, it's completely unsafe to drive. So. What do I do? This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And it's a real shame, right? But actually, this is going to be fantastic. This is a hydraulic booster. A high, and it's heavy. Wow, that's heavy. I picked up this hydraulic booster. I'll put a link below where I got all this stuff. But basically, that's going to go in place of the vacuum booster. Got to take everything apart again, which is a real shame because I just put it all together and this looks fantastic. But. I really should have thought of this before I bought this whole kit. But anyway, this vacuum booster will be replaced by a hydraulic booster. It's going to use hydraulic pressure to assist you in pushing uh, the pedal. And the hydraulic pressure is going to come from, yes, it's going to come from right here, your power steering pump. The pressure is going to go to the hydro boost. It's called hydro boost that I'm going to install. It's going to help you boost the brake system. And then it's also going to continue back to your power steering system. So your pump will be doing duty for your brakes and for your power steering. This will work. This will produce more pressure, more assist than a vacuum booster ever could. So even with my larger bore, I should have very powerful brakes with an excellent feel. And finally, I'll have security in my life. Okay, so this is basically everything you need to complete this conversion over to Hydro Boost. You got the Hydro Boost your unit yourself. Uh, this one is a little expensive because it has got an adapter plate to fit perfectly 
fit perfectly on my Camaro with the correct push rod. Now you can get these hydro boosts out of a wrecker, out of an old Astro van or a diesel. You can get these and uh, weld on a proper adapter blade that will fit on the Camaro and get a proper push rod. It can all be done. I went a slightly easier route. It's all done for me, a little more expensive, but it's all ready to go. Uh, it's a good idea to have a filter for your fluid, your power steering fluid, because you don't want uh, any contamination to go into your new Hydro Boost unit. I got a bunch of variety of interesting connectors. I've got a high pressure line uh, that will go from the power steering pump to the Hydro Boost, and I have a low pressure line for the return of the fluid to the power steering reservoir. So in this video, I'm going to install this on my 1973 Camaro. I'm gonna take you through it and I'm gonna show you how it works and hopefully it'll solve all my braking problems. Okay, so the first step is that I've gotta take everything apart and I found that removing the front wheel and removing the inner the inner fender here allows easy access to the whole brake area, especially the bolts, which I can't even show you. They're buried back here. The four bolts that hold the booster on, you just unbolt it from inside and it'll come out. I'll show you, I'll show you. Okay, as you can see, I've got my painter's tape around the whole lip of the fender to try and protect it and also along this seam here because uh, we're going to unbolt the bolts inside here and so this is going to sort of get loose because uh, the inner fender is uh, sandwiched between the fender and the front valance. Okay, with the brace removed, you can see how easy it is to get access to the two bolts on the side holding the whole brake booster in place. Now before we go too far loosening all the bolts in the front, we have to undo the linkage at the pedal, uh, which is a bit of a stretch to do, but let's see if I can do it. Basically, you've gotta take this clip off right here. The way to do that is to get a screwdriver, no problem. Get a screwdriver and you just pull the tab up at the same time you push up and it'll come right off. Don't lose this. Okay, as you can see, I did get the brake booster out. What I did is I simply unbolted the master cylinder and it's actually being supported on all the lines. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that you do it this that way. It'd be better just to take this off and all the rest, but this is the way I did it. Anyway, supporting, and I was able to lever the booster out this way, so it did work. And there you go. You can see the comparison between the two. You can see how big the booster is compared to our hydro system right here. Another advantage of, of having the fender removed is that if you're not too big a person, you can fit right through here. Oh. Let's see what happens. Come on now. In we go, into the hole. And then... Uh. Oh, it's close. It's close. Oh. oh, it's on. It's on, baby. It's on. <laughs> okay. Man, that's so small. We'll just put a couple of nuts on just to get it started, just to get it secure. Put this guy on. Okay. That's so small. There's so much room left around here. The master cylinder is more into the engine bay. So I was under the impression that the hydro boost system is exactly the same length as a booster, but it appears to be a little bit longer and maybe by an inch longer so it sticks out more, but you've got a ton of room around here. Look at all this room. Wow, you can really 
see things. Okay. Okay, so basically the, uh, the rod going to the brake pedal, this is the brake pedal right here, it fit pretty well perfectly. It was the same length as the original I measured, but it is adjustable and it fit perfectly, perfectly in the position it should on the stud on the brake pedal. And the little clip that fits on the stock one fit on this one, no problem. Do not press the pedal until you have the hydro boost full of fluid and the lines all attached. You could damage, if you press the pedal all the way, you could damage the hydro boost. So don't do that. Now it's time to take off my power steering pump. Now some of these fittings haven't come off since I think about 1980. So this could be difficult. So while that's draining, we're going to undo the fittings or try to undo the fittings at the steering box. Okay, I've got the rag joint cover off and there it is. It's looking pretty bad. I should probably replace that as well. Okay, finally. <laughs> that was fun. Did it. Okay, I've got all the original fitting areas all cleaned up. And as you can see, that's an inverted flare fitting and they're all inverted flare fittings on the original system and also on the steering box as you can see inverted flares so i've got everything all cleaned up ready to go okay so here's my hose kit i got from classic performance they're one of the cheapest ways you can get a hose kit for this system um, i'll put a link below where you can get that it should come with all the fittings i require it's got high pressure hose and low pressure hose. Okay, so here's everything you get in the classic performance hose kit. It's got six feet length of return hose with one fitting already installed. There's another fitting right here. You have a T barb fitting so that everything can go into one return line back to the power steering pump from both the hydro boost and the uh, steering box. And because it's low pressure, it just requires simple worm clamps here. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So that's the low pressure side. High pressure side, we got two separate hoses look to be three feet long each. High pressure with the ends for each hose. So you're gonna have a high pressure line going from the power steering box to the hydro boost, and then from the hydro boost to your steering box. All right, now we come to the most exciting part of the installation of the hydro boost. Yes, yes. All the hoses, all the routings, all the fittings. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it because I know what I'm doing. So you have two fittings that come with O-rings. The larger one, which is an M18, and the smaller one, M16. The M18 fitting, we can put that in first. Now that's gonna go right on the reservoir side of your hydro boost. Now in my case, the reservoir is towards the fender, not towards the engine. Because of course the hydro boost can be mounted upside down, it doesn't matter. Right now, I've got my reservoir on my fender side. And that is where the high pressure goes in from the pump. And that is your M18 fitting. This is our M16. It's an O-ring fitting. It's the smaller of the two. It goes right on the other side of the hydro boost, right in there. We'll just put these in finger tight for now. So this is also a high pressure fitting and the fluid will come out of here, out of the hydro boost and go to the steering box. Now let's look at the steering box. Okay, so here's your steering box fittings. And as you can see, 
one is smaller and one is larger. Now these fittings don't have an o-ring, they are flare fitting and this one is larger. The larger one is the high pressure. So the smaller fitting is the return line. Okay, so now let's talk about the power steering pump. There she is and let's just focus in on the fittings on the bottom. This right here is your return, your low pressure return line, and right beside it is the high pressure line. Okay, so now that we have all the fittings loosely in place, how are the hoses going to run? Well, let's see. High pressure is gonna come out of this fitting and into this hose. It's going to go right along here and into the high pressure in on the hydro boost. Next, we'll follow the high pressure out of the hydro boost along close to the steering shaft all the way to the high pressure in on the steering box. Then we have the return line. So we'll start off with the hydro boost. The return fitting is right here. It's very simple. It's just a regular fitting. Because this is under not too much pressure, again, go along the frame close to the A arm. Then it's gonna come to a T fitting because we're also gonna have the return line from the steering box here. That's the rubber hose coming up here. We're gonna have a T fitting here, and then a rubber hose going to the return line right there. On top of everything else, we have a power steering filter, which I'm gonna put in line in the rubber hose right about, right about here. Time to start cutting hoses, and I'm gonna start with the low pressure rubber hose here because it's less scary. Okay, so I've got the low pressure rubber hose basically routed. There's its connection at the hydro boost. It comes down, down the frame, and then around, and there's my T junction. So I've got my return coming from the steering box here, down here, around into the low pressure side of the power steering pump. Now, we gotta cut the high pressure hoses to length. So basically I have to do a mark and cut the hose right here. Okay, I'm gonna make my first cut on my high pressure hose. There is metal mesh inside this hose, so you're gonna need a hacksaw. Okay, there's my cut, and you can see there's some dust. We gotta get rid of that. Either blow it out with compressed air or suck it out. Okay, my high pressure hose is cut. I've cleaned out the end, so I'm ready to put my fitting on. And these fittings come apart into two pieces. Let me show you. Okay, we're gonna put this on the end right over the hose, like so. Now, to put this on, we're not gonna do righty-tighty, we're gonna do lefty-tighty. These have reverse threads inside them, so we're gonna tighten it down on the hose. And I think we should be able to get this done by hand. Okay, so maybe you can see there that uh, the rubber hose is at the bottom of the fine threads at the end of the connector. So that's as high up as it's gonna go. We wanna make sure this one stays in position. So I'm gonna mark where it is right now to make sure that it doesn't move when we do the next step. This is the next step. This is gonna go in here and this is a regular tightening maneuver. We're gonna tighten this. It's gonna get harder and harder. And as this gets tighter and tighter, it is going to squish the hose between this part and the inside part. And that's why this can take the pressure. This can take up to 2,500 PSI pressure and that's how it does it. It's starting to get kind of tough to turn. Gonna keep going though. And you can see that the collar hasn't moved. It's still in the same position on the hose as it was before, so that's good. As you get close to bottoming out this nut, you have to think about the clocking, the position of this end of the hose as compared to this end of the hose because these hoses, they're not flexible. They will not really twist. So you have to make sure that when they go in the car, that they're in the proper orientation to fit in the uh, power steering pump and then just to flow and fit into here. Okay, all hoses are cut to length and installed loosely, loosely. Okay, so I think this looks pretty neat. I like the idea that everything's black. It sort of matches all the black interior. You're not gonna really notice this too much once it's all installed. 
So now what I have to do is take all the hoses off, tighten all the fittings that go into the various places. Okay, we're using a three quarter inch wrench or socket to tighten these up. And remember this is a flare fitting, so you've got to, you've got to tighten it but enough so that the metal is on metal but not too tight. I hope that'll do it, <laughs> maybe. Okay, so now that all the adapter fittings are tight, it's now time to tighten up the hose fittings. So this one is tight. <clears throat> An 11 16 wrench is gonna tighten all these hose fittings now. And we'll do the final tightening on the return hose. All right. Everything is installed. Everything is tight. There's my CPP filter looking good. Yeah, the moment of truth has arrived. Time for me to find out if this actually is going to work. A little scared. A little scared. Okay, let's put some power steering fluid in the power steering pump reservoir. See what happens. All right, the reservoir is full of power steering fluid. Now it's time to do the bleeding procedure. All right, there's a few ways you can do the bleeding procedure. One way is to get in the car and turn the steering wheel back to lock, back and forth, lock to lock for five cycles. So one full lock this way, one full lock that way is one. Then again, then again, then again, that's five times. And then after that, you press the brake pedal three times. And you do this up to 10 to 20 to 40 times, whatever it takes. And you keep monitoring the power steering fluid level. And as it goes down, you top it up. So that's one way to do it. Uh, another way is to simply start the car and move the steering wheel back and forth and then refill as necessary. So I'm gonna start off by doing it the uh, slower way. The car, the engine will be off. The wheels are off the ground so you can easily turn the wheels right and left and then push the brakes. And I'm gonna see if the power steering level goes down and top it up. It's pretty boring, but I think it's the safest way to do this. Okay, let's begin. All the way to the right. All the way to the left. You can hear some noises from the front. That's one. All the way to the right. All the way to the left. All the way to the right. All the way to the left. I can hear noises coming from the front. I don't like that. It could be good. All the way to the right. How many is that? Four? All the way to the left. I think this is five. I've lost count already. All the way to the right. Okay, then press the brake pedal. One. Two. Okay, so it has gone down a little bit, so we'll refill that a little bit higher. Okay, so everything appears to be working properly. There are no leaks. I've got uh, zap straps in a few places just to make sure that the hoses stay away from the headers, stay in position. The next step is... All right, so the next step is to take the car for a test drive. Um, I won't really know for sure that everything's working properly until I do. So let's go for a test drive. But first I gotta put the inner fender back on and put everything together. So it's gonna take a little while. Pretty 
good. <laughs> it works. The car stops. That's the important thing. I'm just gonna take it. Car for a little drive around the neighborhood. Oh, I can tell there's a huge difference right away. Okay, without doubt, the hydro stop has made a huge difference. I, I'm using very little pressure on the brake pedal, very little brake pres uh, pressure, but it, they're not too grabby either, so it's pretty good. Okay, a little quick stop. Oh, I'm just putting very little pressure on. Very little pressure. All right, there you go. That's the Hydro Boost installation on a 1973 Camaro. I think you can tell that I'm pretty happy with the installation. Everything went smoothly. And as you can see from the test drive, the car stops fantastic. I did a, a few higher speed uh, stops and it stops on a dime and gives you change. So if you have a motor with low vacuum or you just want to have the most powerful brakes that you can get, Hydro Boost is the way to go. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.